so talking about using religion for uh, <laughs> i was sure <laughs> i think yeah i think that's a good stepping stone to to kind of uh, that's a good segue uh, talking about using religion um from from what i've seen um you um you obviously were an adult film actress that kind of uh, used the hijab in uh, in your porn movies or in so, sorry your adult film movies and um you had a lot of blowback for that um I don't know the details about how and why. I, I think I'm going to leave you the floor to do that. Um, so, so what happened exactly? Um, they knew I was Middle Eastern. They asked me if I could speak Arabic. Uh, I told them yes. And I, you don't really know what you're going to do when you show up. Um, you're sitting in hair and makeup, and then they come and like kind of give you the rundown for the day. Go over like the shot list, the uh, you know the set, where you're going, what you're going to be wearing, all that stuff, and. They came in and told me the premise and told me that I would be wearing a hijab. And I, I, I mean, I know, I know what a hijab means. I know what it stands for. So my first response to them was you motherfuckers are going to get me killed. And I have been saying this for five years adamantly. I said it a week after the, the film was released. I have stood by this since the beginning and they did not care. They did not care. And I was too scared to say no. And then it got to the point where it snowballed and it felt like, okay, I've done it once. Um, they want me to do it again. I feel like I've already done it. Like what's the harm? I was more, I was more scared of standing up to them than I was of the public response because I went into the industry, not with the intention of becoming famous. I went in with the intention of being able to have like a dirty secret that no one would ever find out about. Um, I, entered under under really unfortunate circumstances. I was in an abusive relationship and he had a crippling porn addiction and he he was also trying to use me for just just for his I I, I don't I don't want to use the wrong word for it, but I was kind of the pawn in his fantasies and that was one of his fantasies. And when you're you know, young and in a relationship and have been married to this person since you were 18. And, you know, all you need is their validation and their love. You won't say no to them. So I entered the industry for the wrong reasons. And then I stayed in longer than I should have because I was scared. I left him around the same time. And so I, how, how old were you when, when, when you did the film? I was 21, but I was married at 18 and we had been together since I was 16 and he was 23, which was red flag number one. Unfortunately, I'm colorblind, apparently. Um, so at 21, I was in an industry that I was not, I should never have been in. And I was in a relationship I never should have been in. And around the same time, I left both of them. And I stayed in the industry for about two months after that, just because I didn't, I didn't know what else to do. I was on my own for the first time in my life, trying to find an apartment, trying to find a normal office job, trying to kind of milk those paychecks that they gave me every week, even if I didn't film until I found a job. And that's when I handed over my resignation letter. Um, so the hijab was, I, I will never defend that other than South Park does it. South Park does it 10 times worse. <laughs> you know, Homeland does it 10 times worse. I've kind of, I'm not, I'm not defending it, but at the same time, I really don't think that the response was equivalent to the action because because it had a face, it had someone that they could scapegoat it to as opposed to, let's say, an entire production team. And that's okay. And that's okay. I, I do take responsibility for creating a genre that had never existed before and for fetishizing something that is so sacred. But, you know, it's happened to Chris. Like, there's, there, it's disgusting, but there's videos of nuns. There's video, like, it's, it's, a, it's all over the place. It wasn't just the hijab. Unfortunately, it was the first time that someone could be recognized wearing it. And I, I was the scapegoat. And I mean, I've been bearing that sword for six years and I'll continue to bear it. And I'll continue to apologize to Muslims about kind of 
I don't, I don't know. I, I really feel guilty about the Muslim women who wear the hijab and who get hate targeted because of me, because they look like me in any way, or they get hate comments because of it. Like, oh, Mia Khalifa, Mia Khalifa, when, oh God, when I know that that is something that they would never do, they have never seen it, they are so far removed from that world, and for them to be called that is just so fucked up and disrespectful, and that's what I feel guilty guilty about. I don't feel guilty about the men who are offended, I feel guilty about the young women who get called Mia Khalifa when it, it, I, I just hate that they're sexualized for having done nothing wrong. Well, th- well listen, um, people are fucking assholes. And whether it was you or if it was someone else that kind of pioneered this, this, uh, this genre, people are still going to, to, you know, to be assholes and to constantly compare um, women wearing the hijab to you or another person. So you can never really control that. I think what you did is... You apologize for it, you know, you, uh, like you said, it's something that you had to bear and, um, you know, don't, don't, in my opinion, you shouldn't really kind of always beat yourself up on it. I think you made enough amends in in, in my opinion. Um, I think, I think people need to just move on and realize, uh, in my opinion, I think what, what's going to happen is you will hopefully be remembered for the all the good that you did during the blast by giving copious amounts of money, by talking about the country, by just shedding a light on a place that has been so obscured by evil and, and darkness. And, you know, I, you just did a good thing. And I feel like a good deed, you know, might not completely overshadow maybe the bad, but at least it's it's... It's something, and for that, I think we'll always be thankful. Between me, Media, and all our friends, we thank you. And, and you have, you have. I, I, I don't know, but if you know it, but you have to realize that um, most of the people that know you, they didn't watch your movies. I'm one of them, okay, because it wasn't my uh, my uh, uh, idea in the beginning. I, it's not my, it's not, it's not not my thing. But I didn't watch the movie, and I know now that. Around me, when we talk about you and what you did for Lebanon, uh, the this discourse, is, yeah, the discourse is, around Mia Khalifa is completely different. <laughs> it's 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 different. So, personally, I don't care what you did before, and it was, I, I I'm sure that it was hard because it is if you did it because you wanted to have a dirty secret, like you said before, uh, it's not a secret anymore, and uh, and people know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so really, people talk about you today, and a lot of people didn't know who you were before uh, before this awareness and before this uh, uh, um, thing about your glasses and uh, the, the money that you want to send to the Red Cross. So, I think that, like said Moin, uh, uh, now people know you about uh, the good that you did. Yeah. Thank and you. this is, I think, very important. And uh, this is why we wanted to have you in Sardi. Thank you.